So this is a really quick tutorial to outline how to use the um, combined puppet pin tools with null objects to create bones, essentially, in um, for your two-dimensional characters. I'm going to do this really quickly because um, the process can be really complex and be as complicated as you want, but the basic premise is the same. So I'm going to. I've already laid out most of this object. I have this character who was designed and draw by, drawn by Ro Ramon Perez. Um, I've colored him and I've put in a whole bunch of null objects and pieces but I'm going to show you basically uh, how to do a little bit of the hand here and then I'll show you how it works so I'm just going to zoom in and we're going to take a look down here so um, basically I've already started the puppet tool and everything but what we're going to do is uh, right now I have some null objects already set and I need a couple of more to attach to his knuckles uh, so let's uh, I'm going to duplicate this null object and I'm going to put it down here okay right there and then I'll do one more for the tip of his finger well these fingers here this hand isn't going to move a lot it's not going to be a fully articulated hand it's a it's a fairly limited hand but it's it's not not doesn't really matter for this um, because he, he doesn't move a lot but this this you could essentially use this process on a fully articulated hand and do each finger individually for really really pretty amazing results okay so I've added these two new nulls um, so now the next step is I have to add some puppet pinpoints that can then be tracked to this so let's open up this and grab the puppet pin tool you'll see there's some expression codes on there um, I'll get into that later so I have to zoom in and what I need to do is I need to take these pins and I need to put them um, in the top left corner of the null object because the null object is actually it's it's calculated its position is calculated by its anchor point which is in the top left corner so I'm going to attach the pins to those locations so um, let me just delete these pre-existing pins okay so let's add them in um, I'm gonna put one right here and then I'll put another one right here okay so then the next step that I have to do is I'm going to rename these pins so that the names correspond with the actual null object. This isn't necessary, it doesn't do anything with the code, but it is important, it just helps me stay organized. So I'm going to look at this first knuckle and I believe that's hand right two. So I'm going to rename that hand right zero two. And then I believe this one is hand right zero three. Let's just rename that and right zero three okay perfect okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this chunk of code here this code is pretty much makes this whole th method function the position of the pin is actually calculated in layer space um, there's this is different between layer space and composition space composition space takes the entire size of the composition and calculates where a point is within that composition um, layer space takes the point based on the size of a layer and calculates it. This null object right here, its position is negative 16 um, and 332. If I go to the hand for the corresponding pin, which is on this knuckle, it's hand right 1. As you can see, its space is 67,524. These numbers are not the same. If they were to be exactly the same, that pin would be somewhere way different. So what, you, what this code does is it basically converts the um, null object's position into a layer space position of of this puppet so that it basically gets rid of the difference between the two and then it just tracks them exactly. Um, so anyways, so I'm going to copy this piece of code. Um, it's not really important to understand this code thoroughly. You can just copy it and paste it. So I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch to enable expressions. I'm going to paste the code and I'm going to change this. Um, this this layer this line of code here basically is telling it to which layer to track. Um, so I'm going to tell it to track uh, hand right zero two hand right zero two and this oops uh, and enter. Oh, it's saying it can't find hand right zero two. So hand right zero two is right here. I'm not sure why it's hand. Oh, I accidentally deleted the quotation mark. Okay, there we go. So hand right zero two. That means this puppet pin is now tracking the position of this null object. So now you'll see if I pull that null around, the pin comes with it. Okay. 
So I'm going to also do that to handwrite 03. So let's alt click, paste, change to handwrite 03, enter. Okay, so now what we should have is this no, see, I can't move the pin on its own, but if I select handwrite 03, there we go, it's moving. Okay, so the last thing I have to do is I have to parent handwrite 03. I want to parent that to um, this knuckle here, handwrite 02, so I'm going to parent that, and handwrite 04, I want to parent it to the same thing, handwrite 02. So now, if I rotate that knuckle, these two come with it, and um, I've done the same thing, I've linked up the thumb for the same thing. Oh, the thumb, this this anchor point here isn't actually functional rotation because there's nothing attached to it. Uh, it's more of a positional thing. So I can rotate this one here uh, and then I get the thumb movement. And this is just for a really basic, basic, basic hand movement. Um, okay, so that's essentially how that works. So you can essentially um, do this on the entire puppet. Um, in a number of different locations, like I've done on the arms here. It's amazing for profile puppets and doing walk cycles and everything. I'll show you that later. But now, um, if you have a look here, I have this. Um, I've linked up a lot of his body parts. I've linked his positions here. And so also what I've done is, because his feet in the shot stay planted, I wanted to make it so he could just lean from side to side. And again, just by using these null points and tracking puppet pins, I can make all sorts of great things happen. So we've got that uh, on his body. Um, let's, and I'll take a look at his arm here. I've done a number of things for his arm, so I can actually rotate his wrist and his shoulder. And as you can see, we get this nice movement here. I'll have to, I'll have to adjust where it sits in the front, which is, might be a bit of a difficulty, but I'll figure that out later. Um, anyway, so his arm can bend on both both arms. So this this can be really handy just for subtle movements, nothing crazy. Um, and I've also done some stuff with his shoulders. Uh, I've added these little pivots here so that when he breathes or moves, his arms and his shoulders all work together. I can actually make him breathe in and breathe out and his arms will respond to that. I'm going to create a link hierarchy with that later and I'll show you how to link all that together. But that is a basic idea and then you can do so many things with it once you learn how to do this. And it gives you the control of moving puppet pins in a lot more um, controlled manner really so that they don't, um, you don't move, like they don't shift all over the place unpredictably. They have a really nice structured flow, plus they're easier to animate this way. Alright, awesome.